sex, and this is a Yeshuan guy, uh, lab sex uh, filament. Then we have a set of uh, illumination lens, I would call it as condenser lens. And for this system, we have four. Okay. Sometimes if you see a 200 kb, you will see a 200 kb TM, you, you will even have a bigger column. Because they have an eight set, or sometimes you have a chop set of uh, the lens. But this one has four set. Okay. And this one is movable one, this so we can control physically. Okay. Uh, then we have a specimen chamber over here. Okay. And this is the specimen holder. Then we have our objective of a shape that put under the sample to focus into the, the focus screen. Mm -hmm. And this is a SID aperture mm -hmm. used for the detection pattern. Then we have a uh, beam blocker. <laughs> and this is a cold finger. So this cold finger will, will have a, a cold finger rod that put on your sample. Mm -hmm. then it, will, it will absorb any hydrocarbon content to mm -hmm. prevent the high, uh, carbon contamination. Okay. So for a normal TM, you should have a, actually you should have a binocular over here. And it only can be used in the dark room. But this is a later system, so we actually replace the, the binocular with the computer system. Mm -hmm. So actually we can observe it using the computer. And last time we had to switch off all the light to use it. But now we can do it in the daylight room. Okay. So the bottom one is the CCD camera, the most inexpensive part in this system. Okay. Then we have, uh, this system is used to control the EDS, this is the EDS, EDS detector. Then we have a tomography graphic system. Okay, so this tomography system actually is a combination of a few hundred images. We take it in different angles, for example, like we add one, one degrees, then capture one image, take like 100 images, then we combine it, then form this video. Mm -hmm. So this one can use to analyze some uh, the structure, internal structure inside the system. Uh, so, show you the sample holder. Okay, so this is the most common sample holder. Mm -hmm. So, the middle one is the place where we put the sample. Which one? Mm. The on top. Okay. The grid. Ah, the grid. Oh, this, um, uh, okay, so this is a TM grid. Um, all the TM grid, no matter what brand, it looks like this. The size is universal. Every TM is the same. So for a normal TM grid, you will see two face. This is a, we call it a shiny, shiny, shiny surface. Then we have a darker surface. It's because we have another carbon coating on the uh, copper grid. Okay. Later, I'll explain there is few type of carbon coating. They can form different for different function, different usage. Okay. So the carbon is on in liquid or powder. Which one is okay. better? to give you a liquid or powder? For me, I prefer powder. Because sometimes when you prepare a liquid, you use, use the uh, water. Yeah. Or, you, or too much. Too much is a very big problem. Or too less is also a big problem. Mm -hmm. okay. So normally, I prefer to get it in powder form. But in powder, it tends to be kind of granulate, right? Yes, that's another problem. So it has to be fresh. But even in the water, or in the liquid, it will be a grommet also. Mm -hmm. And I don't really like uh, my customer to prepare in water. Mm -hmm. Because water is very hard to, to dry. Mm -hmm. so carbon nanotube normally I do with, with like one to two or one to three. Because carbon nanotube is very intense, yeah, to be sure. Yes. So if I put a lot then it will be very crowded. Okay? So uh, put inside put <coughs> ethanol, any ethanol, then do the ultrasonication. Then after ultrasonication, uh, don't prepare it first. You just take it out and let it settle down. Mm -hmm. Then you only take the liquid from the topmost surface. Uh, because we only want the small particle, not the very big crumb particle. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look nice. Okay? Then you put one drop on the grid, then dry it up. Mm -hmm. One drop only. <laughs> yeah, depends on sample. Sometimes, that's why I said I prefer it in the powder. Mm -hmm. So I prepare in a uh, very good ratio, then I just put one drop. Mm -hmm. Because if you put a lot of drop, right, the carbon coating might broken. Oh. So try to put less drop, as less as possible to protect the carbon flow. Okay. Yeah, how, this about solid, <laughs> yep. how about solid sample like tin film? Uh, like How's the preparation? Okay. What which kind of tin film? Like galenitride. Oh galen nitride, there's only one way F I B. The most extensive way. If uh, it's a it's a polymer coating sometimes you can use the uh, ultra microtom or cryo ultra to slice it. Mm, I think it's quite challenging for F I B. It's not challenging, it's just... It is. The so if you have something like uh, mm -hmm. silicon, wafer, and in the thin film on there, can we do using... Uh, we can do the thin using the thin film 
on silicon substrate? Uh, actually, you have to use uh, FIB also. Oh. But we have tried, uh, one of our specialists have tried to use the ultra microtone to cut the silicon wafer before. Like stack layer, ah, stack yes. what you mean? Yes, but that is a very challenging method. That's why uh, we tried before. Yeah, and that's why she chose the before. <laughs> we failed it. Uh, uh, okay. So this is uh, okay. Angoja. And we have, uh, this is a grid. So no matter which side that you put, it's the same. Because for TEM, oh. it's penetrated. Penetrat yeah. So just uh, when you do focusing, it's a bit different. That's all. <laughs> but you have, if you can, try to remember which side that you prepare. But sometimes you might use this for the FSM. Mm. FSM can only see the surface. If you put in wrong face, then you cannot see anything. Mm. Okay. Kalau lesi pun boleh terbalik tu. Boleh, semua so boleh. Kalau lesi better lah, karena masuk dah FSM, walaupun kan, We can peel off. Yeah. Oh. Sometimes, um, in my case, there's last night. Oh, you you already done the thing. Oh, I see. I think Shura has also done the same way. Is it? Oh, I I don't know. I'm not sure. Hmm. Uh, maybe now for for her and So this is the the copper ring, mm -hmm. and the outside one is a copper copper mesh. So with the inside one. So normally we you have heard about 200 mesh, 300 mesh, 400 mesh, it's actually the box inside the, the, the grid. So if 400 mesh, then you have a smaller box. So uh, what is the difference between uh, the usage of 200 mesh and 400 mesh is when you have a smaller box, the sample will be more stable. But the problem is the, your sample exposure surface will be decreased. Okay. So, uh, okay. There are three kinds of grid in the market. So first type is the empty copper grid without any carbon coating. So you will see empty box like this. Okay. And the second type is a carbon coating grid. So carbon coating grid, you will see a different contrast compared with this one. So you will, you have a carbon layer cover all of the uh, samples, the, the grid. And the third type is the lazy grid. This is the basic lazy grid. Lazy grid, you will see a carbon structure grow as a, like a net over the copper mesh. Okay. So this is the grid that we use for all the nanoparticles. Okay. Uh, why we choose lazy grid, not carbon coating grid, is because of in TEM, thickness is very important. So the thickness determines the resolution 10 nanometer. The best you can get in the market is around 3 to 5 nanometers. So uh, I think you can get one also, but that one is a special one, very expensive one. Mm. And I don't encourage you to buy the one because I tried before. The one right is very easy to broken. Mm. When you put inside the, the liquid, right, all of them is broken. So it will be very hard to do the sample operation. Expensive and easy to broken. Very hard to use that. Uh. Anyway, uh, so for normal normal one that we use or all the university use is around 10 nanometers. So you can imagine if you have a 80 nanometer sample plus 10 nanometer, you will get almost something like this. So you can see the decrease of the resolution. So before we start, normally for TM we have to do the eccentric alignment. JTM is very easy to use compared with FPSM because there's only two alignment. One is uh, the Z alignment, another one is the stimulation alignment. So the stimulation alignment is to make sure that the beam that come out is round. If, if it's not round, then you will see some dragging structure or loss of resolution or something like that. But in FPSM, there's a lot of alignment that you have to do. So we have a FFD. 
function to help us to check the whether the beam is round or not. Okay, so what you see here is actually the main beam that penetrated through the samples. So what we should do is if we make it round. Okay, like this. When it's now, this is the carbon flow. Carbon flow is an amorphous structure. For amorphous structure, you should have a perfectly round structure over there. Okay. So when you see that it's now means that your estimation is very good already. So when your estimation is good, your Z is good. When you go to the sample, you can get the best resolution. So when I do the analysis for this kind of basic grid, I'm not going to analyze in this area because as I said, this area is around 10 nanometers so it, it will decrease the resolution I do something that outside the, the lazy term as yeah, a lattice fringe yeah. normally this is what my customer want to, to analyze so as you can see all over the particles here right we only see this one have the lattice fringe so for other part you can't really observe the lattice fringe even if it's in focus okay uh, this one you can see it also okay mm -hmm. it's because the sample is uh is like <laughs> aligned perpendicularly to the beam so all the beam is penetrated you can see it, even though it's amorphous. So two things that you can do. One of them is you just change to another place. For example, like this, I cannot observe it here. Then I move to another place, I can observe it here. Or second method is you will have to tube the sample. For example, I tube 15 degree, 30 degree, then you will be a little bit angle with the beam. So you can see the, the diffraction pattern. Okay, so this is for the real image. I'm going to show you the diffraction pattern. So when you do diffraction pattern, you are going to use this SAED selected area diffraction pattern, the diffraction aperture. So the function is to close up until you can uh, fully focus a bit on certain location. Okay. For SAED, normally we only do it in a very small location. If it's very big, then the, the result that you get become meaningless. Okay. <coughs> then you just put the beam. Then you change it in the diffraction mode. So this is your diffraction mode. Mm, yes. yes. Okay, so the middle one is the, the main beam. So for diffraction pattern, we, we are not going to see the main beam. Because main beam doesn't mean anything. So we are going to close it and only analyze the, the one that outside the main beam. So all of these dots show that this sample is a crystalline sample. And if you want to... Okay, I'll show you a normal diffraction pattern. Okay. Uh, okay, this is a sample of a, a polymer with some uh, metal particles on it. So when you do diffraction pattern in the empty space and with the particle space, you will see different things. This is a amorphous structure. <coughs> in the polymer itself. So polymer is always some of us. You cannot as, uh, see any crystalline structure. But the thing is you can see some ring over there, right? Because the polymer still diffract the beam. But it's not crystalline structure. If it's a crystalline structure, you can see something like this mm. over there. So this one is uh, done on the particles. Okay? So whenever you get the diffraction pattern, can actually analyze it. Okay. So for example like this one, this one I know is a poly crystalline structure because it got so many dots over there. And for this kind of structure actually to analyze the diffraction pattern is not so meaningful. Compared with uh, uh, for example <laughs> like single crystal structure. This is the crystal structure of wow. the yeah. Very nice. But I never see any body produce something like this. Normally, it is mixed with something or it's a polycrystalline. Mm. Uh, so, 
this is a standard that we buy from another country. <laughs> oh. okay. And it's quite expensive, it's a pure gold. Okay. We need the pure gold in order to get the camera constant. Because every system has, has different camera constant. So after we get the camera constant, then we can analyze your sample. So you can just, uh, for example, like, when we analyze this kind of structure, we have to measure the length of a couple. Couple means that two dots with similar contrast in the uh, opposite direction. Some of the paper I have seen that measure from the top to the middle, uh, this is not correct at all because the measurement will be inaccurate. You will never know where is the center of the beam. Yeah. Yeah. So if you measure a couple then divide by two, this is the most accurate way. Okay? Very nice. So if you get this 783.5 dot, I already have a formula, you just put inside the formula, then you will get the lattice spacing. Mm. So it will be of the phase uh, contrast and the scattering <coughs> contrast. So if you measure over this, you will get a value also. Okay. Uh, then you can compare with the diffraction pattern. I can tell you that this CT auto should be 0 0.38 something. So from the real image for me, it's not that accurate. Mm. Because when we never it's dragged by me. So if I drag a little bit more, uh, it, a little bit less, then it becomes 0 0.38. Mm. If I drag a little bit more, then it becomes 0 0.41. Mm. Okay? But in the diffraction pattern, it will be very, very accurate. Okay? Normally, we'll compare between each other. And then I will show you it's very rush. Okay, I'll show you some images also. Okay, so this is some uh, image taken by me before. This is a dengue virus. They oh. try to attack a rat cell. Mm. So you can see the boundary is, is broken already. Uh, just point at it, then you get a point analysis, mm. like what FSM can do. Or you can do the mapping. Okay, I think you already go through the FSM system, right? Yeah. You can see that for the FSM, you can get the intensity like 20k, 30k. But in TM system, what you can get is like a few hundred. The most you can get is like one or two thousand. But in TM, you will never see. For every system, the uh, EDS result, you can see a bump over there. Yeah. This is coming from the surrounding. We call it as a background information. But TM, because it's very thin, you don't get any background information. So actually, for TM, the EDS is more accurate. Okay, Then you can do the mapping. For example, like this sample is the nickel oxide and silicon oxide. Then you can see the location of silicon oxide and nickel oxide. Okay. And that one is for the tomography. Okay. Tomography normally... ...form the, the, the media. <laughs> This one is still quite new in the EM field. So I don't see any paper published about using this kind of thing because oh. it's coming out in the video. Mm -hmm. But we can analyze quite a lot of new things. Huh? So mm -hmm. see how maybe in the future the paper can <laughs> see the video also. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know. Paper that it. This is it should be an electron scanning. paper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 This is not live scanning, right? This is not. For example, like in the right sample, right? Mm. I tell you, for example, we, we focus too long in the beam, the beam is focused on the sample, but then the lattice will be something. Well, it's calculated the second one. So, like, it's the hardest sample that I ever do. Yeah. Okay. Because normally I do focus during searching, it's okay. When you capture 